everyone and welcome back to another Apex Legends Tips video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the impossible, how to be that dream player that everyone wishes they had on their team. I'm going to be showing you guys how to clutch them 1v3 situations or even 1v2 situations in Apex. If you do want to be featured in my next video, be sure you're liking the video and also commenting down below. In today's video, we have the Ukrainian who says notification squad. Thanks for having that notification bell turned on. And anyways, onwards and forwards to the video. When you guys see a team of three and you're by yourself, I'm sure that thing goes through your mind thinking, I'm definitely going to die. There's no way I can take three people out without them killing me first. Well, actually, you're wrong. And there is a way of doing this. And there's a technique. It doesn't always work, but it's definitely helped me out. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So in what situations should you go against another team? Well, first of all, you want to make sure you're in close quarter engagements with the other team. Because if you're from mid to long range, that gives the other team time to group up together. And you don't want to go against another team team if they're really close together. The whole trick here is taking enemies out one by one. So we're going to speak about that a little bit later on in the video. But at the moment, we're just going to speak about when you should actually commit and take that decision to go against a team of two or three. So they are the two main things you want to look out for when deciding whether or not you're going to commit to going against a full team of two or three is basically distance. You want to make sure you're at close range. And also you want to make sure that you've got buildings around you or other sort of escape routes. So now you know when you should commit to going against a team. Let me show you how you can actually pull this off. So more often than not, the team where you're going against usually will be spread out. If they're in a place like Skull Town, they're usually going to be in different buildings because they're trying to loot up or they're just trying to find other things. They won't generally be in the same building. So that's a really crucial thing you need to take advantage of. So the first step is actually downing an enemy of that team. That's the easy part. Now, once you have downed that enemy, you want to move to a completely different location. Now, the reason why you want to move to a different part is because firstly, the downed enemy can actually ping you and that basically reveals to his teammates where I'm going to be and secondly you want to also change position because that makes it really unpredictable for the other two enemies to find where you are now the other two players are going to do one of two things they're either going to try and rescue their downed teammate by reviving them in that case that's when you can go in and finish off them easily whilst they're reviving their downed teammate or the second thing is they're going to try and look for you so as soon as you finish the first player the best thing to do or what I like to do is try and gain the height advantage try and go on top of a building and if when you're in a place like skull town it's really easy to just jump on top of a building remain silent and just wait for the enemy to try and rescue his teammate you can either do that or you can just move position the thing that you must not do is just stay in the same building or in the same room as the downed teammate another reason why you don't want to stay in the same building is because that's really predictable for the other two teammates that are going to come along and try and rescue him is they're going to think first of all that you're going to be in the same building as the person you've just downed but in fact, you're not going to be in that building and you're going to be somewhere else and you'll be able to pick them off without them even expecting it. Now, the hardest part of a one versus three clutch is finishing the second person. If you manage to kill the second player, then it just turns into a 1v1 and that's almost like any other player that you're killing in a game of Apex. Now, as always, once you finish the second player, you want to change position again so the two downed players can't see where you are. And in this situation, almost 90% of the time, the third teammate is going to try and come along and revive one of the two downed teammates and that's when you can go in and finish off the third player easily the last player is going to look around to make sure you're not there and they're basically going to try and go in for the revive and that's when you can pick them off when they're not expecting it and it's as easy as that guys i know it's easier said than done but i'm going to show you guys an example and put all of these words into a clip and i'm going to show you guys that doing these tips will really help increase the chances of you coming in clutch so my teammate has just been downed and my other teammate is halfway across the other side of the map that's what happens when you play with random teammates unfortunately but in this situation i know that the enemies are in the building so what i do is i go into the building i manage to pick the first person off quite easily and i use the left sort of uh, doorway as a cover uh, because the other enemy is shooting at me so i move into the left doorway i then come out when i'm ready to shoot i finish off the second player i then completely move out of the building and change position as I said about earlier and I basically know I've done the easy part I finish off that second player and it's now a 1v1 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait patiently for the other teammate to come along and try and rescue the two down teammates and this is where I managed to easily pick the enemy off I say easily I actually ran out of ammo when I tried to shoot the enemy but luckily the kick finished the job there in the end now one massive tip about this whole video and I want you guys to take away is that you should never try and engage with two people in 
one time and if you feel like you're doing that then you want to make sure you've got an escape plan so for example in that video there was a window right next to me and I know if I was dealing a lot of damage I would have just escaped by going out the window and just running away you want to make sure that you're taking off one enemy at each time because you can't one versus two people in this game you can't get double kills the health is so high and it's not like Call of Duty where it's really easy to get double kills triple kills this game you definitely have to pick off each person individually and you can definitely do that by playing smart and being very unpredictable by moving to different positions in that area if the team you want to go against are all grouped up together it's definitely a no-go you definitely do not want to engage with them one bit because if all three enemies are going to try start shooting at you you know you're going to die and there's probably about one percent chance of you coming out on top Sorry, anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up here, guys. I hope you've learned from these tips, and I hope you managed to clutch one time today when going into the game of Apex Legends after watching this video. If you did enjoy the video and it helped you out, be sure you're dropping a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, first of all, I'd like to say welcome. And second of all, I'd like to say be sure you're subscribing so you don't miss out on any of these future Apex tips, discussions, all of that good stuff. And I'll catch all of you guys out in another Apex Legends video. Thanks for watching.